Hello, I am Sinfogel. My friends, anniversary is finally upon us. We have been waiting a whole year for this moment. Uh, there is a lot of new faces to the channel, so I want to welcome you. Every time a data mine drops, uh, I do an analysis video used to talk about the new content, and Steven is yet to be released, so I am technically on time here. <laughs> but um, my goal here is not telling you what to pull for, but rather assess the viability of these new sync pairs relative to units who already exist in the metagame, so you can derive your own conclusions from that. Uh, well then, let's uh, get started. All right, let's uh, do this in uh, chronological order. First up, uh, we have uh, Lily and Lunala, a ghost type master fire striker. As of time of recording, I have a 2 5 copy, so I have uh, the advantage of experience now. So, as a striker, Lily is a very straightforward unit. She buffs and murks garbage. Her real distinguishing niche is her trainer move, because she buffs plus 6 special attack and plus 3 crit in one turn with zero drawbacks. So, Lily has the best buffing efficiency in the game, period. Strikers usually need supports to replicate this setup speed. This means that Lily is very flexible when it comes to team compositions. She doesn't need help to strike, so you can feed literally anything else you want alongside her. Although, outside of quick tempo on her 2 5 grid, Lily doesn't generate gauge. The buffing efficiency here is unparalleled, but Lunala is asking for some speed support in return. Besides that, Lily also has a potion, so she is a striker with defensive self-sufficiency. She can keep herself alive or help out a tank when needed. Now, Lily is master passive, is a carbon copy of Leon is Galar flag bearer, but it's Alolan themed. You have a 10% move damage increase and a 20% move damage reduction, which can be enhanced when your teammates have a Lolan theme skills. This passive turns Lily into a deceptive support, because she's filtering damage for the entire team. And as you may notice, Lulana has solid stats. Lily is very tanky considering her healing boosts, so she will have no issues of surviving stages. So, your first thought might be entertaining Lily's master passive to boost her damage, but she lacks cohesion with other Alolan sync pairs, except for Acerola, I guess, because she activates ghost theme skills. Remember that Lily kinda needs speed support, and the only Alolan units who act as pure gauge generators are the Mask Royal and Plumeria. It's not like there is a strong synergistic Alolan core that succeeds just because of Lily's presence. So don't constrain yourself to abusing Lily is master passive. While it's very handy, if you have a sync pairs that better fit your strategy, you should go for them instead. Then we have Healthy Benefits 5, just like Hop and Samacenta. This is a little callback to Shadow Shield in the main series games, where if Lunala receives move or sync damage at maximum HP, it's cut in half. This pairs well with healthy healing on Lunali's grid because enemies may be unable to bypass her constant regeneration recovery. And unlike Samacenta, Lunala doesn't have to tank, so this is easier to maintain. You may be tempted to tank with Lunala, but I think there is strikers who do the whole tanky striker thing better, like Lysander. Then uh, there is uh, Super Preparation 4. Just like Leon, uh, Lily has a 50% chance of proccing a super effective app next when she takes any action. 
This multiplier can also affect the sync moves. So this turns Lunala into a very potent option for super effective contexts. Lastly, there is uh, Rejuvenate 6. When Lily sinks, she refills the move gauge to maintain her attack chain. Although Lily's sync nook isn't too impressive, even at 35, so I don't feel there is a big incentive on syncing with her. Broadly speaking, Lily feels like a perfect striker. Her buffing kid has no drawbacks at all. As a matter of fact, she is helping out her teammates with a potion and her master passive. She only really needs speed buffs because her main offense is a 4 bar move, but from an execution standpoint, she is a very easy striker to use. So now that we talked all about Lily is perks, we can address some of her problems. Lunala is a ghost type striker with fairy coverage. This means that unlike sync pairs like N and Cyclone, for example, Lily lacks access to an innate multiplier besides super effective damage, so you cannot enhance her offense with a field effect. This issue is further aggravated when Moonguy's Beam has no drawbacks, so it's on the lower end of 4 bar moves. Although it has innate piercing blows, so it ignores passives like Vigilance and Endurance, which is really handy for Legendary Arena. And Moonblast has a 30% chance of debuffing a special attack for some techie utility, but that's about it. The trade off is a lower base power ceiling. Now, don't get me wrong. Lily has 400 special attack and she deals good damage, but don't expect her to blanket check content like Emmet can. Lily massacres super effective stages, but that's kinda the point of strikers. <laughs> so the best way to measure their power is off type. And off type, Lily is a little lacking because her pick isn't too impressive. I was trying to do off types with Lily in Champion Stadium, but she was struggling. I had to resort to cheesing stages with a sleep or flinch, so Lunala could stick extra Moon Guys beams. <laughs> like, if you grab all her multipliers and fully buff her master passive with triple Alolan theme skills, she has a similar output to Bianca in Psychic Terrain, but you typically won't be using a full Alolan core alongside Lily. But uh, this is fine, really. Lily has enough strength to get through the Champion Stadium, and her role compression is very valuable. She's just not a board striker like Archie. So let's check out the Lunala's grid. One fight Lunala is sad. You only get the turn move move point refresh too, which helps for Balbilla climbing, but that's about it. Lunala's two fight grid is a lot more interesting because it gives Lily her most important tools. I got really lucky pulling two fight Lunala, but I was going to recommend that you go for a two fight anyway <laughs> because it makes Lily more useful. Here, she gains access to MGRs as well as Quick Tempo, so she can help a dual striking core much more easily. And she also gains a 10% multiplier with Healthy Power at 1, which procs when Lunala is at full health. Then we have some syncing tools with Double Down 2 to enhance super effective sync damage, as well as Soften Up at 1 to guarantee Lily crits her sync move. There is also Potion Master Healer 1, as well as Moonblast Honor Roll 1 to improve her chances to debuff a special attack, which gives her a more defensive utility. Now, if you hard whale for a 3 5 Lunala, it helps, but it doesn't change the unit that much. The most drastic improvement is Lunala is a sync damage, because you gain the syncing tiles as well as a brain sync 3. 
Considering that uh, she is a striker role, uh, her AoE Signook uh, can clear a Ghost Week stage uh, very easily. Then uh, there is uh, other utility to consider. Uh, Danger Damage Guard can save Lunala from a sticky situation. You also have uh, Propulsion 1, a Spring May is Potion Efficiency, Healthy Healing, and Syncure, which is all fine and dandy, but uh, all of this is uh, very situational. I wouldn't uh, pick these passives unless uh, my strategy specifically demanded it. Uh, for example, uh, when doing a solo run in Champion Stadium, <laughs> something silly like that. More importantly, we have some extra multipliers. Uh, Moonblast uh, Critical Strike uh, 1 and uh, Moonguy's Beam uh, Power Flux uh, 3, just uh, to fatten uh, your DPS uh, a bit more. The standard build I would recommend would be center around Lunala's DPS. Because her sync damage and a 6 star EX support buff have a similar value, so I think you are better off just fattening Moonguy's Beam is damage. You could also go for a Moonblast DPS build, just grabbing all the Moonblast tiles as well as the multiplier. And Lunala can get you through a very weak stage in Champion Stadium without any major hassles. It's going to be worse than using Diantha, but if you want a fairy type coverage, Lunala is a good way to go. And uh, if you raise Lily to her 6 star EX potential, then I would recommend a Sync Nuking mode instead, because uh, her AoE damage, while it's not uh, the best thing I have ever seen, is still uh, very solid and uh, the cheap uh, other sides uh, uh, may set up chaos for later. So, uh, yeah, Lily is an excellent striker, but uh, we definitely have uh, other sync pairs uh, who dominate the stages more easily. She's really, really good on type, uh, though. Given the relative lack of sources uh, for ghost type uh, damage, uh, this gives Lily more value, but uh, that may dwindle as DNA adds uh, more ghost type strikers. Up next is N and Reshiram, or first, Tech Master Fair. As of time of recording, I pre-pulled N and used Tech Candies to raise him to 3-5. And needless to say, I've had a blast with this guy. <laughs> he is by far one of the most versatile and fun units I have used. This guy is a fire type, which is very difficult to mess up in this game. And can use a Sunny Day to boost his damage, but it also means he has some hefty competition from his fellow fire type sync pairs. So, as a tech, Reshiram is a fairly complex unit. And has a couple modes. You can use him as a utility unit or as a DPS unit and the conversation changes drastically depending on the direction you want to take. I think we should unwrap the kid and look at it as a whole before beginning with comparisons. First up are the stats. The only concerning thing here is N is a special attack. It's kind of funny because uh, greeting special attack nodes raises Reshiram is damage more than greeting blue flare nodes. <laughs> uh, so this unit really appreciates augmentations to the stat uh, through things like uh, type skills. But uh, ultimately, this doesn't affect things uh, too much in practice. Uh, we'll get to that in a bit. Then we have a uh, blue flare. It's uh, the special equivalent uh, to ball strike. It's uh, four bars, very strong but with accuracy issues, and it has a 20% chance of burning the target. Then there is Noble Roar, the exact same move that gets its has. If it debuffs, the target is attack and special attack by one stage. So this is some amazing utility for Legendary Arena and Champion Stadium, because enemies are much easier to handle when they are debuffed. As for any starter move, it has a couple uses. It raises a special attack by 3 stages and accuracy by 1, so this fixes blue flare, but it also accelerates the move gauge. 
In conclusion with the Dire Heal Plus, uh, N behaves as a striker. He is fully self sufficient and he can spam his primary move thanks to his third move. And Gage Acceleration also circumstantially benefits his partners. This is all fine and dandy, but then we have the Tech Multiplier. This is the same one that Champion Iris has. The more you debuff the enemy is stats, the stronger this becomes. So it's meant to play off on Noble Roar debuffs. Now, this can be a bit of an issue because if you want N to nuke, he has to focus resources on debuffing the enemy, rather than buffing himself or attacking with Blue Flare. And this constrains his team compositions. You probably want to bring a partner dedicated to debuffing so N can nuke more efficiently and he can focus his attention on other tasks. This is worsened by the fact that N is a fire type sync pair. You preferably want to bring some support to enhance Reshiram is nuke, but this restrains N's team compositions even more. However, N is nuke is a lot more legit with his full grid, because he has devastation and pecking order, just like Champion Iris. They scale off of normal roar debuffs, and uh, there are viable team compositions uh, to make this function. You can use uh, Getsis uh, plus uh, Tech Nine Tails uh, while in uh, self buffs uh, to accomplish the nuke. But when I used that, it felt very clunky on Mugage. This mode is viable, but you probably want to drop Sun because uh, the nuke is as strong as is, unless you have uh, some really strong. Uh, roll compression in order to facilitate the weather for N. Now, the passives are what turn N into a really interesting utility option. The master passive is the exact equivalent to the Alola flag bearer we discussed earlier with Lily. It's the same thresholds as Leon is Galar flag bearer, but these are Unovan themed. This shifts uh, N is uh, team archetypes a bit, because uh, if you can take advantage of the boost, uh, you should go for it. And uh, fortunately, Unova is stacked with very strong sync pairs. You can pair N with Rosa, Signus Udalesa, or Ingo to quickly buff his offense, and you can bring Getsis or Champion Iris to debuff the enemy ahead of time in order to set up his nuke. The biggest problem here would be his song cohesion. None of the current song setters are Unovan, but with N is offensive self sufficiency, you can work something out. N is strong enough to carry a battle with song support, so it's worth dropping Unovan sync pairs used to buff his damage through weather. Now, N has this new passive that turns him into the unit he is. Here we have Extend Range. What this does is that it turns N single target moves into spread moves, and it negates the standard damage reduction that spread moves normally have. Say that you use Earthquake with Cynthia. If it's hitting three targets, then the damage is lowered to 66%, but Extend Range nullifies that penalty, so N can hit the entire enemy field with his standard blue flare damage. This is why DNA nerfed N is a special attack. Since he lacks the AoE damage penalty, he hits really hard. Extend range also affects Noble Roar. This is very important because it gives N similar utility to Champion Iris, where he can globally debuff enemy stats. Uh, this description is a little confusing because it implies that it may affect the terrain moves to also benefit the entire party. Uh, that's not the case. Uh, this description actually implies that if N were to have something like a Calm Mind, he could spread the buff uh, to the party. But uh, this would be something for a future unit to consider. Then there is uh, Piercing Blows. It allows N to bypass enemy passives uh, like uh, Vigilance and Endurance. This is very handy for Legendary Arena, because uh, Piercing Blows also affects uh, N Isin Nuke. Lastly, N has Innate Mind Games 9. Anytime N attacks with Blue Flare, he is guaranteed to drop a special defense on the entire enemy field. 
because remember that Blue Flare is AoE because of extended range. Mind Games 9 unfortunately doesn't work with Noble Roar, so if you want to debuff a special defense, you have to account for N spamming a 4 bar move. And you know I love debuffs. <laughs> uh, special defense drops are very difficult to come by in this game already, and I think that alone gives N some very strong value. N constantly bumps up uh, damage used by spamming his strongest move all the time. So now that we have a clear picture of N, I think he's the strongest unit in this batch. If you use him for utility, he can aid a special striker with a gauge acceleration, extra blue flare DPS, uh, special defense debuffs, uh, while also burning the enemy field. <laughs> and uh, N is full greed also gives uh, blue flare a pepper alley one, so he comprises a gauge support as well. This is an unreal amount of value for a 4 bar move. And if you don't feel like doing that, you can still spam a Noble Roar, so enemy damage is easier to handle. And you can use a Sunny Day to push any damage to some absurd levels. My point here is that Reshiram is an extremely versatile unit. Very reminiscent of Champion Iris, but the difference with N is that Blue Flare damage is quite brutal. Now, let's talk about Striker N a bit more. This is probably the biggest counterpoint to N as a unit, where he has worse fire type DPS than Red or Leon. This mindset is correct, but also incorrect. I think people aren't properly looking at Striker and his potential because he's being compared to the wrong units. Like, if you compare him to Leon or Red in single target damage, uh, there's no contest, and sucks. He's trying to compete with monsters who have over 400 special attack. However, remember that N is true value lies in extend range, the fact that his spread damage doesn't suffer from penalties. When you compare him to AoE strikers, the conversation gets a lot more interesting. For example, units like Cynthia. When properly set up, N actually outdamages her. And remember, his DPS keeps bumping up because of Mind Games 9. Reshiram is DPS threshold is more comparable to units like Archie or Maxi. His AoE damage is that strong. And just to clarify, his songless AoE damage is similar to that of Archie and Maxi targeting three units. When you add Son, his AoE damage is on another tier. However, the second N loses multiple targets to hit, he loses a lot of steam relative to single target fire type strikers. This is where N is Signuk comes into play. When he loses AoE damage, he can make that up uh, DPS uh, through his Signuk, so it's kind of like the inverse of a striker, where strikers are focused on single target damage and their uh, 6 star EX uh, Signuk, but N focuses on spread damage and then working things uh, with his Nuke. I have played a striker N extensively. With and without Sun, with and without Nuke, also in dual strike team compositions and all of his applications are viable. N can always find a way to contribute because of how strong his AoE blue flare is. Well, I think it's time to check out the grid. The 1-5 is barring. You have some accuracy for blue flare, which is handy, because blue flare with plus one accuracy can still miss. This tile guarantees that Blue Flare lands if you use N is move once. This scenario comes up often because N is move has a gauge acceleration with a couple uses. So you may want to use his turn move sparingly to abuse the fast move gauge. The 2-5 gives N sharp entry 1, which is amazing, because it spares N from wasting a turn using Dire Hit Plus in order to maximize his critical hit rate. He also gets Blue Flare Hostile Environment 1, 
which enhances uh, its chance to burn uh, from 20% to 40%. And uh, this can pair nicely with uh, a burn-based uh, Leon grid. You also have a pecking order for a proper sync multiplier, and N is sync lock mode is a lot more legit with this style. N is full grid unlocks devastation, and now N is nook is just silly. <laughs> with the sun boost, it works stages of type. It's very close in power to Liar is sync nook. There is a couple new passives here that uh, give you a chance to debuff attack and a special attack for the whole enemy team even further when utilizing Noble Roar. These are really handy if you plan to have N handle his own nuking setup. I think the most important tile is Blue Flare Pepper Alley 1 though. Whenever you use Blue Flare, it raises the party its speed by one stage. I just love N his capacity to help with move gauge. Like, relative to Champion Iris, he has two guaranteed uses of gauge acceleration, and he can also raise speed. I think N is best builds spam Blue Flare as soon as possible, and the fact that doing so doesn't interfere with gauge management is phenomenal. The rest of N's grid is kinda whatever. Super duper effective one is really expensive for a boost, and a piercing gaze is pointless if you buff accuracy by two stages. Adrenaline one helps set up your next sync move in three rounds, and a healthy super hit can enable some funny numbers, but I haven't found a use for these tiles quite yet. So, while any's grid is simple, you can adjust depending on how you want to use him. If I were to focus on N as a striker, I would do something like this, but it still largely depends on your lineup. You do this when you want to nuke with N, so you have to bring Champion Iris or Getsis. They are both Unovan sync pairs, so they boost Unova flag bearer and they can debuff attack and special attack to fully set up N's nuke. The focus here still lies on spamming blue flare, so you can get your speed buffs and mind games debuffs. On the tier the party slot, you can bring a support to help N buff faster, or you can bring a sunsetter if you want N to melt the stage. Now, if you want N to handle his own nook, you can grab the debuffing tiles. When you do this, you have to bring a support like Sabrina or Fongler to facilitate N's offense, so he can focus on debuffing instead. A Sunsetter is much easier to feel in a structure like this. Lastly, you can run N as a pure DPS unit. If you do this, I would grab a sharp entry so N can set up his grid in one turn, and then you can use Rosa or Singasu de Lesa to buff his special attack, while N spams Blue Flare as early as turn 2. And uh, this kind of build massively benefits from a 6 star EX support buff. Uh, if you only spam Blue Flare with N, do remember that his nook isn't very impressive <laughs> unless you dedicate yourself to fully debuffing enemy stats. So you are better off. Uh, doing something more useful with that. Ultimately, N is extremely versatile. There isn't a correct way to use him. Rather, he has several applications, and they are all equally as effective if you have the team composition for it. Like, even a 1-5 N is really good because he has special defense debuffs and gauge acceleration. That's worth a team slot to me. Next, we have the most divisive unit I have seen in a really long time. <laughs> My boy, Steven and Mega Rayquaza, a flying type master fair striker. This guy is the reason I am rushing this discussion video, because his banner is about to drop in a few hours, and there are some things I need to get out before it happens. <laughs> so. Let's address the elephant in the room right away. This Rayquaza has a questionable stat spread. There are supports with better offensive stats than this, and 
it's really put Steven in a dire situation. He's theoretically a fantastic striker, but he is held back by his stats. And this is not like an Archie situation where he has a quadrillion innate multipliers to fix that. So the question is, how is the kid making up for this stat spread? This whole Steven Debacle has been really funny to me because I have read some outlandish things regarding Steven. <laughs> like, people in straight denial thinking that the kid was data mined incorrectly and DNA made a mistake. And also people calling for boycotts because this is like the beginning of DNA selling wars units or whatever. I don't know. I am not here to address that. But I can understand that people are disappointed with Mega Rayquaza because of all Pokemon, this should be a win button. But trust me, people are really downplaying Steven's output, and I will try to explain why. I just don't want a Marnie situation to happen again, so I am going to give Steven his fair chance. So, Steven's main offense is Dragon Ascent, one of the strongest moves in this game. It's four bars with very high base power, but it's used like a close combat where if you use it, it drops your defenses by one station. Similarly, you have Draco Meteor, which has accuracy issues and it debuffs Rayquaza its special attack by two stages. Despite the downsides, Steven's moves have very good base power. However, one of Steven's innate passives turns these debuffs into a benefit. Downside app converts debuffs into positive stat races. For example, when Steven uses Dragon Ascent, he gains defensive stats, and when he uses Draco Meteor, he buffs special attack by two stages. So this is kinda like a contrary in the main series games, where debuffing Steven actually strengthens the unit. Then, Steven's buffing kid has a plus 4 attack, and his third move raises Creed by 3 stages per use. So, Steven sets up very quickly. The reason you have multiple uses for this third move is because it also grants super effective up and next. So, you can control when you can launch a booster attack. This is especially useful when sync nuking in super effective contexts. This also buffs Rayquaza is speed by two stages after Mega Evolving, but I don't think that's very relevant. Then we have the Master Passive. You know the drill. It's a carbon copy of a Galar Flag Bearer, but Hoenn themed. So it enhances your move damage, and it filters move damage from the enemy. And given the fact that Steven is a Hoenn Sync pair, he also pairs very well alongside Maxi and Archie, just to get a massive boost through the conjunction of their master passives. Now, here is something we needed to sit on for a little bit. Steven has this new multiplier called Good Form. It's basically a Rising Tide equivalent, but for moves, where the more you raise your stats, the better base power you get. So, our understanding of Rising Tide and Power Loving, which is the debuff equivalent, is that when you reach 18 buffs, it caps in damage. However, is this really how good form works? This is very important to know because it could make or break Steven. So, we have a referential for good form already, and theoretically, it's a Power Loving. I ran some tests with friends to see how power loving truly scales, so I set up a champion iris at various default thresholds, and it turns out that power loving keeps scaling with every debuff applied on the target. It doesn't cap at minus 18 debuffs, it just keeps going for every stat you debuff. This game has seven stats. You have attack, special attack, defense, special defense, speed, but also accuracy and evasion. Power loving keeps scaling with each of these stats, so it could go up to 42 stages of scaling. 
And when talking about the positive star races, uh, crit buffs also count. So good form could go up to 45 stages. Assuming good form scales just like a power loving, we are assuming that it raises 2.6% BP per buff, rounded down. And remember, Dragon Ascent already has some fat base power. If this is correct, this changes Steven's playstyle as well. Instead of bringing Phoebe to buff his master passive, you would bring supports like Elio, Lily, or Leaf to very rapidly stack buffs on Steven to enhance good form. In particular, there is Holiday Rosa, who activates flying theme skills. If you have her at 3-5, her turn move can buff plus 4 stats at random, as well as a guaranteed plus 1 speed buff. Rosa can buff any stat, so she can fill in gaps like accuracy and evasion, and I am very curious to see what that does to Steven's damage. Assuming we are interpreting good form with these mechanics, Steven hits about as hard as right hand with 30% steroids, and if you bring Maxi for home pride, Steven could hit as hard as Leon outside of Sun. This could be a very big change for him. Anyway, Steven also has a move gauge refresh for, just like Rev. This helps him maintain gauge very well. And I never talked about Steven's Mega Evolution because it's frankly irrelevant. Mega Rayquaza only adds speed, which is not the most important metric. This speed stat is fantastic though. It's like a Kukui tier, so Rayquaza unironically maintains gauge by itself. But Steven has this dichotomy where his Mega Evolution doesn't grant him offense so he doesn't need it to sink. Instead, you can focus on him as a DPS unit and bring a 6-star EX support to fatten Dragon Ascent damage. Given Steven's kid, I would focus on him as a pure DPS unit. Just set him up really fast and click Dragon Ascent as soon as possible. His Mega Evolution sucks, and his Sing move suffers from nerf base power because of it. So his Nook is still good for super effective content, but it's not his forte, so please stop comparing him to Nate, <laughs> because it's not even the proper way of judging this unit. Regardless of how you want to spin Steven, even if good form doesn't scale like we theorize, he is the best current flying type striker. Dragon Ascent is just absurd, even with Steven's stab spread. Steven is very self sufficient offensively and defensively, and he also has the liberty of using 6 star EX support buffs, unlike Blue and Pidgeot, who is forced to mega evolve Fear Sync. So, a thing about Steven's Rayquaza is that it's the polar opposite to Xenia is, because Steven doesn't want the weather to be active. He has multipliers derived from the absence of weather, and he has a tile to specifically guarantee this function called Weather Wipe 9. If you tile Steven with this, he can remove weather. This is an intentional design choice by DNA, so you can partner Steven alongside Archie and Maxi to use their master passives, and Steven can remove weather, so Rayquaza can nuke. But I don't like this mode because you are worsening Archie and Maxi's performance just to make Steven look better, <laughs> and we already established you shouldn't focus on Steven's nuke, so I don't see the point. You can partner Steven with the weather legendaries, but you are better off leaving the weather alone and spamming Dragon Ascent instead. As for the grid, the 1-5 is rather poor, you know, nothing new. You get the 1 sync multiplier if you really want Steven to nook, but the damage is very likely to disappoint you. <laughs> And you also have a Draco Meteor Accuracy plus 10, just to guarantee that it always lands. Now, if you want the DPS mode I recommended, 
you're gonna stop at 2-5 because uh, you gain all the Dragon Ascent uh, tiles uh, and uh, coupled with good form, Steven should chunk really hard. The standard grid I would run would be something like this. The full grid helps Steven his DPS because he gains a 10% multiplier as well as a Dragon Ascent Fleet Feet 1. So whenever you land Dragon Ascent, you also raise speed. This buffs good form even more, and it also helps with move gauge. Steven is Drake Meteor build is also viable at 3.5 because uh, it gains uh, Critical Strike 2 as a multiplier. When super effective, this is uh, stronger than a neutral Dragon Ascent. If you 6 star EX Steven, this should hit as hard as Xenia is Drake Meteor, so it's a viable choice. But with so many Dragon type strikers available, I would not pull Steven specifically for this function. Now, if you raise Steven to his 6 star EX potential, then you can consider uh, nuking with him. Here, you still want uh, a few Dragon Ascent BP tiles, so Steven isn't hopeless after nuking. And uh, you want to know who is the best partner for seeing nuke Steven? Egmonts. <laughs> uh, Tech Farfetch and Tech Firo have a Leer, so you can enhance Steven's nuke through the defense drops. Uh, and uh, they also proc uh, flying type skills uh, to fix uh, Rayquaza with a plus 54 attack, uh, which really helps it out. And uh, the sinking tiles are compulsory because uh, they really bump uh, Steven's middling uh, sink base power. Ultimately, Steven is somewhat bland as a striker. He doesn't have downsides uh, to his striking style, but he offers almost no utility in return outside of a very good speed generation. However, since people are calling this a trash unit, you know, I immediately gravitated towards garbage units, so I am pulling Steven and canning him to 3-5. <laughs> I am very curious to see the potential of his good form DPS. If good form works like we think it does, it makes Steven a lot stronger than he appears. But still, he does feel underwhelming relative to Archie and Maxi. With all these exciting new sync pairs, I almost forgot to check the free one. <laughs> so here we have Misty and Psyduck, a limited time free to play unit. And uh, her event yields enough materials to raise her to 5 star potential as well as getting 5 5 copies. So we can assume a full grid as well. So Psyduck is a defensive water type support. This is a solid star spread, worse bulk than 5 star Misty, but it's serviceable, you can tank with Psyduck. And uh, you also have a solid special attack stat, this is important for later, keep that in mind. <laughs> and then uh, the Kid has Water Gun, a spammy one bar move, this is uh, one of the stronger distinguishing niches that Psyduck has relative to other supports, where uh, it doesn't interfere with the uh, gauge management. And uh, it also has a potion for recovery and a full heal for a proactive means of removing status conditions. So compared to Misty, for example, Misty and Starmie, who have a healing hand too, you kind of depend on rolling the RNG to proc uh, the passive and remove status conditions. But with full heal, if you get hit with something, then you can remove it immediately. So this is one of Psyduck's strongest perks relative to other supports. And then the trainer move grants plus two defenses as well as AOE regeneration, so even more recovery. And uh, the same move doesn't have a side effect, although it's water type, so you can enhance it with Rain Dance, keep that in mind. <laughs> and uh, then we also have a Racing Rain 1, so when the weather is rainy, you assist with Move Gauge. And the Lookalike 1 gives a Psyduck a 20% chance of Racing Evasion when hit. And a Fear State 4 for a Healing Boost used to spare a potion for a party member. So, pretty solid all around, but. Uh, would I use this over BP Morty or Evelyn and Entei? Uh, 
Psyduck does have its applications, most importantly to combat status conditions. So I think that's the angle we need to tackle here. So another important aspect for Psyduck is that it has access to a six star EX potential. So you can sync with this and get a really chunky DPS boost for your partners. So coupled with the status recovery, Psyduck has niches for sure. Now the grid provides just enough for Psyduck to perform better. Agile Entry 1 raises evasion by one stage, so that helps with tanking. Water Gun MGR9 is a means of getting some gauge back guaranteed when you spam Water Gun, so this is phenomenal. And uh, you also have an MPR3 on the trainer move, so if you really need a Psyduck to keep raising defenses because it's your only source, then this is reasonable to reset for, in spite of the fact that, that you only have one use for a trainer move. You also have a Potion Master Healer 1 as well as Potion MPR3, so the proc is somewhat efficient. And uh, we also have some syncing tools, which is relevant uh, considering that Psyduck has uh, the 6 star EX potential. So you do want to sync with it if you bother with the investment. And uh, that's it really. Then we also have Water Gun tiles as well as a multiplier. And uh, you know what that means? That means an offensive support meme. <laughs> so uh, before going there, uh, the standard grid I would run would be something like this. Grabbing all the potion tiles as well as a water gun MGR9, you know, the best utility that Psyduck can offer. But uh, if I really wanted to reset for defensive buffs, uh, then uh, you can drop uh, the MGR9 on water gun and uh, go grab that, as well as getting some defensive stats uh, here and there where possible. So I really like this defense plus 20 tile specifically because it really helps uh, Psyduck is bulk. But. Uh, for the meme build, this is viable solely for the fact that Psyduck has a 6 star EX potential. So you can use Psyduck on their Rain Dance, and it actually has a fairly potent Sync Nuke. It's quite good. It deals unironically good damage, but it's worse than Starmie is a Sync Nuke, and it's going to be worse than a proper water type striker is a nuke. But the benefit here is that it provides the 6 star EX support buff. So if you do bother with Rain Dance, then grabbing the sinking tiles as well as Shower Power 5 can get you some really nasty damage out of this if you provide Psyduck with some offensive support. But having that roll compression used to enhance Psyduck's nuke uh, it might be questionable, unless uh, you use uh, Psyduck as a striker, which I have done. <laughs> it is viable. This guy provides enough defenses uh, that uh, you can afford uh, going for a build like that. But uh, yeah, this is a very simple unit. I just don't feel the need to expand on it because it's uh, yet another defensive support in a similar vein to BP Morty, but it exchanges uh, flinching utility for AOE regeneration, status recovery, and uh, 6 star EX potential. Which is very fair, you know? But yeah, that's it for the anniversary. Hopefully I still upload this video on time uh, for people to watch uh, before pulling Steven. <laughs> that's the thing I am most concerned about. It, but um, I hope you enjoyed. Thank you for watching. Take care. Best of luck uh, with your pulse, uh, but uh, I hope to see you another time.